What is good? We're back. And we've got uh, moves to make. <laughs> got to make them every week. We're going to fall behind. <laughs> Or don't make any moves. We'll we'll wrap this weekend up with or this uh, this show up with maybe not making any moves at the end of it. We'll have a little conversation about that. But first, we're gonna give you the moves that you must make right now. Uh, Jason, you got that list of guys or what? I do. Okay. You want all of them? <laughs> yeah, hit me with it. We got Tony Pollard, of course. Oh, I meant I meant your list. My list? Yeah, you had a list for me. My list Was of it guys: Et, Olave, DJ Moore. Moves oh. to make. Those guys, values down. George Pickett, Josh Jacobs, All right, Brandon Aya, Calvin Ridley, make. DJ Moore, Sam Laporta, Will Levis. There you go. So when the value's down on the good guys, you buy them. Amari moves, Cooper. Moves to make. All Trevor right. Lawrence. Let's get I, the guys that I don't want to buy Calvin Ridley or DJ Moore, but. Or maybe even Will Levis. Who knows? Yeah, either that. Yeah, let's get to some guys that you still might be able to afford and could really help you out here. Not the big guys that everybody knows about that. Hey, the value's down. You buy the dip. That's how it works, right? Yeah, so we yeah. talked about George that. George right. Pickens. Talked about that two weeks ago, and then um, B. John goes out and has 100 yards and two touchdowns. Right. Right. Exactly. So on this show today, we're going to talk some running backs. We got Pollard. We got Monty. We got Swift. We got Chase Brown. Going to hit you with some running back talks talk about some purchasing points and what these guys are up to and why why we're interested in these guys right now so uh let's kick it off with tony pollard not sexy nobody wants him <laughs> he's rb 18 currently averaging 5.2 points per game that's 18th overall rb 18 all right averaging um, what what per game 15.2 points 15 per game. okay you said five averaging 15 points a game so if you then go to the last three games which obviously one of those was a bye week but i've been looking at a lot of this stuff over the last couple of weeks in, in like a three week window. So four, five, six, he's averaging 18.3 points per game, gives him eighth in fantasy points per game. Got a 66% snap share, Dostaji Spears 34. He's ninth in rushing attempt share with 58.6. His route run percentage is 48.2%. That's 12th overall. And his target percentage is 12.7. That's seventh overall for running backs. Mm hmm. So a lot of positive things pointing to Tony Pollard. He's 27 years old. He's not going to die tomorrow. I mean, we hope, <laughs> right? Jesus. You know, that, I mean, you know, everyone wants to talk about running backs die, you know, the yeah. age you die. He's not going to die. He, he, he's certainly not, you know, a fully loaded car, right? He's not, he's not the, the XL King Ranch, four-wheel drive, mud tires, you know, the step-in bars, <laughs> you know, all, all, the, all the fancy shit that makes the car look cool, but... He's, his resale value is pretty good. He's been rock solid all game. He's pretty much averaging. Like, if you look at all the games, right, he's got one game at five points. The rest are pretty much all 15 or 18 points a game. Sure. Obviously, you know, we, we talked about the average to start, but I don't know that many people even realize how well Tony Pollard is performing right now. And then if you really look at it overall, like, he's 18th and you're like, ah, 18th. What? No, man. Like, to be able to put you know, 12, 15, 18 points in your lineup every week for, a, 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 I think, a really good price. And we'll see that when we look at it on some Dynasty Daddy stuff because I think everybody else is the same thing. Unless you own Tony Pollard, he's one of those guys that's flying under the radar. Right? Definitely. When you, and, 18th overall is what? Is a running back? Yeah. Wow. I'm surprised with his good numbers that there's 17 well, running backs has put up more points. The problem is, is he doesn't have a, he doesn't have a 30, he doesn't have one of those huge games because yeah. then that knocks all your well, average way up and it puts you way up. But like, and he's had a buy and not a lot of have, not a lot of have had. Right. Yet. So that hurts his total overall, but mm -hmm. his point, you know, his points per game, like I said, the last couple of weeks, you put him at 18.3. So Look, it can't get any worse for, I think, where the Titans are at right now either. It's not like, oh, what if the wheels fall off the Titans? But the wheels are off. Yeah. It's not working. Yeah, it's things on bricks. Right. So what what we're looking at here is a guy who's performing really well. He's, yep. he's staved off Tajay Spears for now. He's got control of this offense. It's like the only thing that's working. They need to get Calvin Ridley rolling again. He's He was upset after the game this week. Very upset. Um, Nuke's back in there. They have some framework, and they have a guy who's called a decent offense before in his career, and they have a good offensive line coach. I just I just feel like Tony Pollard right now is, is a really, really good buy opportunity for the, the, the cost that you have to spend on them if you're a competitive team, right? Two all day, right? A, a thousand percent. I like, oh, see sure. that a lot on this Dynasty Daddy trades. Right. I mean, so that's what that's kind of what put him to lead the show off for me was that like once I looked through all the stats, I, I watch him play most weeks, right? He, 
Titans get on a screen because I'm very intrigued. You know, yeah. they're my, one of my most intriguing teams in the offseason because he just had to see. And it, it's becoming harder and harder to watch. Yes. So he gets less and less of a screen. Yeah. I was interested this week with the Colts division matchup, Anthony Richardson or, or Flacco, who's going to come in there, what's going to happen with Downs and uh, right, yada, right. yada, yada. But Pollard has looked good and he looks good out on the field. And every, all these things kind of marry up mm-hmm. for me. And that, that makes me say I feel pretty good buying Tony Pollard at this particular juncture. And, and like, you know, Jason's looking at Dynasty Daddy right now, and and there's there's just there, there's some pretty good value up there. There's there's twos all over out the, the yin yang. Twenty six yeah. and twenty five. Yeah, if a two gets it done, I mean that's that's easy. There's no question about it. I think one of the I think two of the biggest things that you just said was first of all, you know, Tennessee, like you said, the the tires are off, the wheels are falling, they're they're gone. So the Tennessee offense looks terrible, and. Pollard is producing at a 15, 16 point type point per game. Even when you take it, you say, hey, take it back to the last couple of weeks. The first week, week one, uh, you know, he had uh, four, 18 points, right? So, and then week two, he had 15 against, that's, he did that against the, the Bears and the Jets. Mm-hmm. So, supposedly, the Jets have a good defense. You know, they ranked pretty highly. And you said he was like seventh in targets and running backs, but he's not like crushing it in receptions which is like a good thing and a, not a great thing. But the reason I bring it up is because his rushing yard total is 82 rushing yards against the Bears. That's good. Mm-hmm. Uh, against a really good defense. 62, 88 against Miami, which Miami's not a good defense and neither is the Colts. He put up 93. Wouldn't we want him to do that? Right. You know what I mean? So he's getting it done. He's catching the ball. You know, he's got plenty of catches, but it's not like he's just catching the ball. Right. And he's not getting production on the ground either. So he could be, you know, all of a sudden he's just a third down back or he's getting replaced by, you know, he's, he's doing it on both sides. He's doing it with rushing and receiving. And, and he, he's getting like, I guess you, if you really wanted to kind of play devil's advocate because Levis, arm is so strong, he can still back the defense up because they have to worry about him slinging it, but he's not being productive you know levis is all at very erratic he's all over the place i you, you know mm-hmm. i had i had the uh titans in my in the in the super contest this week and i was watching some of it and it's just like man i don't want to be betting on levis anymore yeah but while i was watching levis be terrible i was watching pollard be good yeah so i i just you know flying under the radar and, and you know i know i know the editor over here really wants us to be hot and heavy on the big dogs but like this is the important stuff this is the meat and the potatoes of of coming in here medium-sized dogs have um, to eat as well (laughs) and and trying to gain an advantage and to me pollard was a screaming value after i went over everything and looked around and the teams that i have pollard on like i was i was reluctant to start him for the first couple of weeks and now i'm excited to start him every week right i mean of course like you said, I mean, when you look at it overall, he, he's not necessarily in the top 12 of, of but I, I think he will, if he stays on the same trajectory for the rest of the season, no doubt. he's going to end up there easily. If he, like I said, if he then has one big game in there mm-hmm. where he scores in the 28, 32 fantasy points, like Charbonnet's, I think a game, like a, a, a player, hey, Charbonnet's at like 17. There's no, like, give me Tony Pollard a thousand times out of a thousand over uh, Charbonnet right now on a week to week basis, right? Of, of course, and I think that and Charbonnet think, had a couple big games, right? When when Walker went out, Sharps did what he had to do, but then when Walker's in there, Sharps is a back seat. Tony Pollard is not taking a back seat to anybody right now, and I think for the types of trades that Jay's showing us, of course, again we you know say yeah. it every week. There's no context to those trades, but if you can go out and and get Tony Pollard for a two, maybe you got to give a two this year, you know, and then maybe a. Add a four next year or something like that. Kind of mix yeah. it up a little bit. I wouldn't be jumping to try to give away my two and my three in the same draft Here's, class. I like to mix them up a little bit. Yeah, sure. You Jacoby know? Myers in a two. I mean, that's good enough to get Pollard done. The Raiders stink right now. You know, Greg Dortch and Jatavian Sanders. Now, that's one point tight end premium, but still, like yeah. that's, you know, all day long. Oh, an old Kelsey and half point PPR, two quarterback. You mm-hmm. know, I mean, Kelsey might be helping you out for the rest of the season because they're just depleted and they've gone back to hey let's let's throw the shit yeah i'll take kelsey out of that kelsey but i mean well that's a that's a that's a one that's a one year few week trade right there well it's hard to you know like there's not even a premium on that mm -hmm. either so it's hard it's hard to to just kind of decipher that trade because you would imagine that people buying tony pollard or win now not too right. many win now. People are selling Kelsey. Right. Uh, so that's interesting. Uh, but then this this digs Pollard for Wandell Benson and a first. You know that's probably a little bit more of a win now team going to a, a rebuilder, right? Mm-hmm. Do I love that value? Not not really. And it's a twenty six first, so it's two years away first. That Diggs is putting up big points right now, and and Pollard's like I said, you know, interesting. So 
you know, th- th- there's kind of a, a, a different and the way I look at that one, that's two different teams going in two different directions there. So that, that'll help you decipher things. But, you know, there's a lot of stuff, go, you know, a one and a two for Addison and Pollard. I know nobody likes Jordan Addison right now, but I mean, I don't I don't hate that deal per se. Addison was a first round pick. I th- still think he's garners a first round pick. He just, you know, he didn't play for a minute. And then since he's been back, he's been pretty good. Absolutely. Um, I like I like Addison for his value. I mean, he's 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 pretty cheap to purchase. So, all right. Well, Tony Pollard really like it. I think I think a two plus a little bit of something, and that you can get that done for Pollard. I love that all day long for a competitive team going mm-hmm. right now. And like I said, this isn't. I mean, this is the first year of Tony Pollard being here, and it, like I don't think Tony Pollard's coming off of that the tibia or fibia at the from two years ago, mm-hmm. and last year he said he didn't feel right until like week eight, nine, or something like that. So, and which at the back half of the season, Pollard was really good for the Cowboys. Yeah he's got low mileage right it's not like christian mccaffrey coming in and he's not i know christian mccaffrey i think might be a year older than he is but like they're not equal in where they're at wear and tear and and, you know he had zeke in front of him for the whole time and and was getting sparing carries some catches here and there had a year or two of semi-workhorse numbers but we we can see a guy like pollard who is a really good running back or is a really good receiver played a little receiver in college there you know, really, really last for, you know, that he could be, have three years of being really, really good here. Yeah. Hey guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free discord channel or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, ADP and player pages all for your pleasure. All right, let's keep it moving. Let's go to Montgomery. Let's go David Montgomery here. And he makes the sheet this week because he got the extension. Like, Mm -hmm. was that Sunday morning or something that we we got a money notification? So why that's sort of a big deal here. Now, obviously, he could go somewhere else and he could be the dog. He is the dog. Maybe it would be even a little better for him. But the situation that is cooking right now with the Detroit Lions is we don't have a whole bunch of fun, advanced stats for David Montgomery because David Montgomery just goes out there and he plays ball, (laughs) right? Eighth in points per game. I mean, he's he's. He's RB9. He's averaging 18.1 points per game. The Lions are eighth in attempts and eighth in yards, fourth in rushing yards per game with 157.8, fifth in rush TDs, and then uh, have the third lowest stuff rate percentage. Mm -hmm. So not individual Montgomery stats, but that's the reason that we like Montgomery even more so moving forward. He fits like a glove with what they're doing. (laughs) Like a glove. And he has been nothing but absolutely outstanding for the last two years in Detroit and now you're going to get potentially you know two more years of this and and we'll you know we'll see how much of the back end of the second year than that contract what it is and what the details are I haven't seen it so maybe it's just a one year kind of deal but I mean there there, there isn't too many other running backs that I want to put in every single week and he just he just seems to be growing in confidence and 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 in fit and scheme everything like everything trending in the right direction with Monty and the Lions and you know maybe that hurts your Gibbs stock or maybe that hurts your perception of your Gibbs stock but Gibbs does this thing with Monty they're a running team that's what they sure. do fourth in rush yards per game 157.8 the other two or three te- at least the other two teams are Lamar Jackson and and um and the commanders with Jaden Daniels. Right. And I wouldn't be, I mean, Hertz isn't running as much, so I don't know who, maybe the Niners are the third team. I'm sure. Uh, yeah. But like th- those other teams have running quarterbacks. So that's why their rush yards per game are up, uh, up near, you know, the high end of things. They, they got Jared golf. Yeah. They've got an elite offensive line. They've got an elite offensive system and they've got all of a sudden Jamison Williams just added another piece to the puzzle over there that you have to defend week in week out. So you have a committed offensive line and head coach that wants to beat you up. You have the speedster in Jameson Williams that who's that, evolving. I mean, I look they threw up a graphic of comparing his routes last year to this year and the percentage of go routes just vertical. It was like half, 50% last yeah, year. It's down yeah. to like I don't know, 30 or 40 and, and like all his in breaking routes and hitch routes are doubled up. Like yeah. he's so he's evolving and expanding and not you saw him drop a, a bad guy. ball last yesterday and then they came right back to him yeah. for the first down and he made a good catch for sure i love that when they came right back to him so williams is evolving shout out to jmo because long time favorite of the show mm. but for sorry sure. sorry we go well no but it's like you so you got all that to worry about but then you got a smash mouth running back behind a smash mouth offensive line so how and, are you supposed to and then a ben johnson like an elite play caller yeah so now you know 
So I, I heard put out a tweet the other day or yet today with a cut up of some of Monty's runs this year, like just bowling people over the missed force tackles, like just incredible oh, what Monty's putting down on tape right now. So, so Monty to to piggyback what Casey was saying, Monty's got. You know, he had 16 points in week one, 17 in week two, 21 in week three, 15 in week four, by week, 21 points in week six. That's a running back who has caught minimal balls so far. But at the same time... And he's a great fucking receiver. Listen to this. Snap percentage, 49%, 35%, 51%, 40%, 31% snap percentage. He's barely on the field. And listen to that production. If something happens to Gibbs, Monty might be the 1-1. Oh, my God. You know, like yeah. if Gibbs were to get hurt, tweak a knee, tweak an ankle, something, tweak a hammy, like Monty is splitting reps with the other running back. That's crazy production with small amount of snaps. Like when he's in which, there, he's get, they which were is beating crazy. the shit out of the Cowboys, so they didn't need. Well, you that's know, true, and they've done that. They've, down, yeah, but. they've done it a few times. It's a good point, but like you know that the overtime against what was um was it Washington? Well, they, when they go to, we go to overtime against week one against the Rams and they just ran him down the field and the Rams couldn't stop it. And it was like, Hey, this is what we're going to do. Remember we talked about it in the off season and then we got the Rams game. We got into the Rams game and things kind of got a little funny and we we're going against Stafford and we're in overtime. Oh yeah, that's right. Run it down their throat. Go David, go David. Yeah. And it, so we it's got like, a we got it. We're in a situation where we, where we need this, and, you know, last year down the stretch, they, they kind of activated Gibbs a little bit more. They, mm-hmm. they were putting more on Gibbs' plate, which I think was great to have him fresh. You know, this is where this team wants to be. Obviously, big loss with Hutchinson, but <clears throat> which was a devastating point in the game yesterday with that Aiden Hutchinson loss for, for the Lions. Definitely. T- terrible for, for good football week in, week out. Uh, but fifth in rush TDs. I know I said all that stuff all yeah. at once, but, like, they're moving the ball. They're in the red zone. They want to run the ball. Exactly. Monty comes in and, and finishes drives for them. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you can you can be a little light on the on the snap share from where everything else. And like I said, Monty, Monty isn't in here putting up any of the gaudy analytical numbers that everybody would love to see from running backs. All Monty's doing is just playing good ball and is in a good situation and is a great running back who, well, again, shout out to David Montgomery, been a longtime favorite of this show. Suck it, Nick Whalen. Dude, I was thinking that's... <laughs> Same well, thing. <laughs> just like you said, I mean, he got he only got twelve carries. He goes to eighty yards and two touchdowns. Yeah, you know they're they're blowing out the Cowboys. The big play. <laughs> they got them Cowboy. They got them blown out. So like they don't need to have they they don't even have to play offense in the second half of the yeah. day. You know, I was happy to see St. Brown get a touchdown in the second half because I just figured that they were up so big that they were going to be put off the gas for the most part. But then I remembered that they hate the Cowboys. And right. so they wanted it to points matter. It's one of the tiebreakers. So fuck them. Run it up. Yep. So uh, a first for money? In, in, right. So in moves to make, you're in a, in a nice position here with David Montgomery. If you're going in opposite direction. You could be a seller, and I think you know you could be a buyer. If 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 I'm in in a good position as a team, and you want to trade, you want to offer me a 26 first to sell David to, to buy David Montgomery for you, and I'm and I'm a top three in points, and I I'm, I'm road grading people, and I got a, a well built team that's ready to roll. I'll give you a 20. I'll trade my 26 first away for David Montgomery right now. Yeah, no I'm, problem with it. I mean, I would have to agree. Like you know, I I've said this before, and. You know, we're five, six, we're six weeks into the season now. When tonight finishes up, we're doing this on Monday night. Bills Jets going on right now. So, look in the mirror. Are you a are you a contender or not? You know, be honest with yourself. That's hard for people you know? to do. Though. I, I know you're asking you, a lot I, of people. You you really like? Do you have a good team and you just kind of underperformed a little bit? Know thyself. Do you, ha- do you have? Are you four and two, but you should be two and four, and you got a couple of spike weeks out of some flukes and this and that? Or you know so. Or do you need to buy David Montgomery? Do you need to sell David Montgomery? These are this is a big time question, but I I, I have no problem trying to buy him right now. Obviously, before the season would have been a little bit easier. But sure. But we also I said this five times in the off season. I would rather buy high when I figure out who the hot hand is and who's who's made it to the season and who's coming in there grinding. And David Montgomery is a perfect example of that because no matter what, I mean, obviously, if he had like Derrick Henry stats right now, he would be more expensive. But like. He's still not that expensive because his name is Dave Montgomery. Half the people in your league probably don't like him anyway. Right? They don't understand how splits, really how good splits, he is. He splits a backfield. Splits it with Gibbs, you know. And so, he's, I, and then there's uh, there isn't. I'm sure there's not that many shows, especially that go numbers wise, that are not championing championing David Gibbs Montgomery over, yeah. because he's not he's not in any of the categories of going through fantasy data points of of 
any, you know, he's mid in a bunch of them, but it's just like, that's, that's fine. You, you he's, need to throw all that shit he's out. Great at football. <laughs> yeah. And watch the game yeah. and, and then just know what they do as a team running the ball. Yeah. Right. And what the, what the goal is for them. So, yeah. And I mean, obviously Gibbs would explode if Montgomery got hurt, but if that the other way around, you can't, you know, how, how expensive would it be to go buy Gibbs? And he's not right, right now. He's, he's not barely attainable. Yeah. He's, he's you, you couldn't afford him really. And he's not really, I mean, he had not, a little bit of a down week this year. He's, he's not been producing good. like Montgomery. So why not go get, I mean, Mon- he's, basically producing right around Montgomery's level and but what he would call right you know? right right for sure for sure so so David Montgomery want to want to shine some love on him he's a moves to make if you need one go get one buddy he could also be a sell for you and that's kind of how this game is right you know we can come in here every week and tell you who to buy who to sell but like a lot of the times it's it's basically situational um, and Montgomery has got owners in a really good situation in any direction they kind of want to go in here that's a really good way to put it you know if you're if your team is losing it's definitely not montgomery's fault you know but at the same time if your team is losing and you have here we go you got rice from the chiefs mm-hmm. on ir he ain't coming back but like you know but if so if she you got, expects him home any minute if you got rice you got hollywood brown or you got but if you had puka he's been out nico collins on ir you know if you got there's if you could point and find reasons why you're losing it's not David Montgomery's fault. If some of these guys are coming back and you're still in the middle of the pack and you can say, okay, well, and, you know, Puka might be back in a week or two or Nico will be back in three weeks most likely and I can kind of ride this out a little bit and I can still be, I can still strike and still make some money here, then maybe don't sell David Montgomery. Mm. But if your team sucks and you just happen to have David Montgomery, then this is a great time to sell David Montgomery and try David. to find the, go, go find the, wor- go find the worst team you can. Offer him for your for their first, and do that for the first four or five worst teams. Most likely, they should all say no. Yeah, because that's their job is to say no. I don't want Dave Montgomery because my team sucks and my draft pick will be high. But somebody might be in delusional land and say, well, if I had Dave Montgomery, maybe my team would be good. And you know, work your way back. Sure, that's that's the idea. David, who David. knows that reference? David, I gotta call my mother. <laughs> well, Independence Day. Well, he gave it to you. I was gonna, I was gonna David, hit me in the comments. David. <laughs> I, I gotta call my mom. We will not go quietly into the night. <laughs> what a speech there! That was a good. Gave. It was a good speech. All right, next we're going Chase Brown, and we're gonna finish up with DeAndre Swift. Do we have anybody like that people care about to bring yeah, up on this show? Should be caring about all these guys. <laughs> um, it's not the top men. I don't care. Yeah, you like your men on top, so Jason's a power bottom. <laughs> all right, eleven point nine. Fantasy points per game for Chase Brown, right? That's that's what we're looking at overall for the season. While that is not that much fun and not that sexy, he's got 51 attempts, 238 yards, 5.55 a carry. He's got Sixth. Three TDs. He's 16th in missed tackles force. and missed tackles force per attempt, he's at .31, which is number two out of all running backs. He's got 65% rate versus Moss's 46.2% percent success rate and over the last three games brown has a 50 percent attempt share to moss's 40 percent attempt share Mm -hmm. the target percentage is 9.2 for both despite chase running 32 routes and moss running 52 routes so right their their target share is the same but the 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 amount of routes being run is not even close in a good way for brown right brown brown has more for moss but they prioritize getting brown the ball when he's out there running around Right. And Brown is 57.5% of the snap share of Moss, 44.1. But then if you look at the last three games, like I said, which is what I've been doing with a lot of these stats, just to kind of see what's been going on over the last three. He's got 23, 16 and 14 points. Yes, sir. In the last three contests in weeks four, five, six, he's 11th in fantasy points per game with 18. So coming on hot now, Moss. Maybe he's battling a little bit of an injury. Sure. And the one thing that, 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 you know, they even pointed out in the broadcast last night is that, you know, maybe Chase Brown's pass blocking is not uh, on the level of where Zach Moss is. Yeah, it's not even close. Is. It's uh, definitely not. Learnable trait mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. sure. But what Chase Brown gives you, and I know, I know a lot of people just hate him because the analytical people from last year were talking about his stuff rate and all these things and that he wasn't efficient with his touches. But if you watched him play, he was... The same uh, kind of stuff you were seeing right now, you're just seeing it 
play out at a more higher rate here of, of yeah, more usage. volume more volume and he oh look at that a rookie learned a few things right. from year one to year two the scheme changed a little bit and now every when you watch the Bengals Chase Brown is clearly the better back clearly the more explosive back you're ha- you hold your breath every time that guy touches the ball and then it's it's somebody usually just barely gets him by a leg and he's in the in the middle of a crease that you know if he gets going he's a really really fast guy super explosive and then on top of that underrated pass catcher for sure uh, so i just and the Bengals are, are coming alive joe burrow is said still not right from the wrist thing but the Bengals' offense is humming right now they're they're, they're really yeah. coming alive over the last two three and games and it's not all games. it's not all on chase brown but they've sucked the first couple of weeks and right. they've been great the last couple of weeks and chase brown's a part of that right uh the, you know it the six week total that they have because they haven't had a bye week his numbers put him as an rb2 rb22 on those totals but like you said in the last three weeks he's been ridiculously good he's been a almost a rb1 to begin the season the Bengals were leaning on moss because a protect joe burrow b it's the beginning of the season and we just want to go out there and try to figure out where we are and what we're doing and let's get the more veteran guy out there who's not gonna mess up as much and then all of a sudden they start slow again and they suck Right, And it's like, all right, well, that ain't working anyway. We might as well put this guy out here to shot out of a cannon every time he gets the ball. And like you said, I mean, for the pass protection, yeah, it's not as good as Moss. He's not as, you know, not quite as big and he's not a veteran, but he's all, he's 210 pounds. It ain't like he had, a, he's not like he's 195 pounds. Oh, this guy's there. been, was a workhorse you know? in college. He's not, he's been not a workhorse just like a in college. Back that just, he's, yeah, he averaged 30 carries a game for a year in college. I'm pretty sure. I think he had a, 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 a game in college where he had 40 something carries. Yeah, he was um, excellent. I loved him coming out of for sure. I so I, oh, I got a ton of them. I, I picked him up a bunch of times this off season. Uh, he was one of the guys that I had probably like the most activity around. And one of the reasons why is because, like you said, an underrated pass catcher. He spent the off season working with a like high end wide receiver specialist. You know, mm-hmm. it's like he's got goals. Right. You know, a man wants to expand his right. this operation over here. So he's not only a coming alive in the running game he's not getting peppered with targets but it because i mean they have freaking chase brown i mean um, jamar chase and t higgins and right. he's and and you know yoshi Voss or whatever his name is yoshi was getting Bosch, yeah. was getting a ton of run in the first couple of weeks and all he so does is catch touchdowns they got options and you know moss can play you know moss isn't right. just moss isn't like a pretend running back he's no. a decent running oh, back good running back chase brown is coming alive yeah. and it's, it's nice to see and i think that you could probably still get him for a decent price that's that's again i think on, on a high-end offense with a high-end quarterback right and it's not like moss is some unreplaceable guy i mean he's good but he's not chase brown and when chase brown hits his stride it's you it's either going to be on your team or it's going to be hard to well, get i i think you know obviously again chase brown got hurt and and moss or uh, yeah sorry zach moss got hurt and was banged up so i don't know how much that's lingering wh- where we're at with that but again what you're seeing is I, I just feel like you're starting to see chase brown take this over and i feel like it's going to be really hard to put that genie back in the bottle right. when you're getting the explosives Moss from pr- from this run game and probably and not going to completely lose his job over not. it but you don't say okay I, chase brown you're back to four carries a game yeah coming in i had this thing pegged 50 50 and then i thought chase would would do what he's doing whether you know injury help that or not whatever it probably sped up the process and them sucking right if they would have been three and oh instead of oh and three i guarantee you it would have been moss a little bit longer into obviously the injury played a sit you played a big part of that but uh, you can't play if you're hurt but if if they if they were doing great then moss is in the spot where he's in and they're not as quick to say hey yeah we need to get brown in here more because they've sucked Let's get Brown in here more. Any, why not? Yeah. I kind of judge some of these things coming in on, on like the chatter I see out there in the streets, which I don't see a whole lot of Chase Brown chatter. And then on our end, on the chatter, on the on the I we get no questions about almost any of these guys. Right. So that tells me that, that there's not a whole lot of traffic going around. A lot of people telling you to trade for these guys or or setting the market for these guys. So, I, you know, when the market isn't really set on some of these guys, which, Good you know, I, I don't think the market's really set on any of these guys that we just talked about. Good point. You can find inadequacies of people's value on them for one reason or another, whether they're hanging on to preconceived notions from last year because some other talking head told him something. Tony Pollard sucks. And Tony Pollard. Hey, I was in on Tony Pollard last year when he was going to be the guy. And I told you that he was going to. And now he sucks. And he's, mm-hmm. you know. Montgomery was never good. Mm-hmm. I hated him as a bear. And Nick Whalen told me he was the worst. Mm-hmm. So, you know, Montgomery sucks. And, and Chase Brown, the analytical guys last year, you know, had some numbers that pointed to, you know, maybe not excellent. But 
That's that's why. Well, that's a great point. That's a great point. You say it like that because there, I I've, I listened to some guys over the, um, the Underdog podcast. They had a really good stat about Chase Brown's like third down usage, which was like maybe he had like one third down pass protection snap all year as a rookie when they had Joe Mixon. Mm-hmm. You know, and Joe Mixon just like why would you? Right. Yeah. And one of those rare seasons where Joe Mixon plays all the goddamn games. Yeah. And <laughs> and you got a quarterback that is when he been, does. You got a quarterback Boy, that's been nothing but can we keep this guy healthy? Yeah. The Bengals have seen it multiple times now. Like they are horrible uh, without you know Burrow. Dude did play pretty good last year. Not going to lie, the backup quarterback good enough to get a, a contract. It's a quarterback but, system. But the, they weren't going to the playoffs and having a chance to to attack anybody, and nobody was scared of them without Burrow. Right. Uh, so I don't get I don't blame them for Chase Brown, you know, third down pass protection opportunities last year. I get it. But like you said, you're not putting it back in the bottle now. And and this is a really good time, whether you're hearing it here or you're just happened to watch the Brown, the Bengals play against Chase Brown and the Browns and the Bengals is really f- screwing me up now right yeah. now. If you've gotten a chance to see this guy. Then yeah, you know I, I love watching him. I just feel like you're all he's it's he's always uh, just a shoestring away from uh, exactly one. exactly and and a t- yeah. and and that was what some of the guys were saying last year. Well, he had two or three big runs and or two you know he caught a couple passes and took him for forty yards, but other than that, wasn't any good. Right. It's like okay, well, like can he evolve? Can he grow? Can right. he can he take a step forward? And he has. Yeah. And I think he's I think there's another step to be taken because I, I like the guy. But like I if you too. go go and get that un unset value right now it's not settled so go and try to pick up chase brown on the cheap right now yeah i agree so like you know we can we can go look for two twos two 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 a two and a three and there's i'm sure some values that are up there but there's also some values that are down there i like some of the value on on chase brown out there like i said i don't i don't know that the market's terribly some established are, some of, it's all over the place yeah. really i mean some of these are really bad like it's going to never treat just chris godwin for zach moss and chase brown was well, I mean, exactly what casey just now said They're, the values are going to be all over the place if two, you have if you have one league and you hear this video right now or to, you know what when you listen to this video and you watch it or listen to it however and you got one league and you go and you go to the guy who's got chase brown and if he's not selling he's not selling there's nothing mm-hmm. you can do uh, you know, right. but if you if you have a couple leagues or the one league that you're in and you go knock on the door for Chase Brown, then it might be possible. And if you really want to do it right, you don't go straight in there for Chase Brown. Right. You know, right. you got to go in there and ask him for Jonathan Taylor yeah. or you got to go in there and ask him for, you know, Brees Hall or, or, or somebody. But, you know, you got to yeah. go ask him for somebody bigger and then and then, puts, oh, well, I can't afford that guy. Yeah. And then, you, you know, How take, you feel about what about Chase? Brown? I think Chase. Brown right. Right. Hands. It, it's basically I need, I need to run him back, man. Let me let me get Chase Brown. It, off your and, hands. It, you know, it depends on how quickly he gets back to you with the messages but yeah. it could be a 24 to 48 hour process yeah. you know you're trying to work your way you know you won't chase brown but if you go in there and ask for chase brown first and foremost and that's the only person you talk about guess what his price just went up yeah there's two threes and a two here there's some twos there's some threes uh there's you know then there is some higher end stuff keon coleman and Raheem moster for chase brown i mean moster's nothing keon coleman if you hate him i you know i guess i guess you could do that but, but that's basically giving up a two from this year, or maybe a you high end two, the, it's a, it's an a early QB. two or a late first. If you it's had a two QB uh, for for Chase Brown there, yeah, Lad McConkey and a three. That's a, that's a bit steep for me, but there's a Chase Brown and a two. Chase Brown and Quentin to get Tank Dell. I mean, I'll I'll yeah, take, I'll take Tank, Tank Dell. Yeah. Dell side on that one. Chase Brown, Tyrone Tracy. You know, there's there's a fun one. Braylon Allen, Chase Brown. You know, there's value out there. This is two and a three. Sam Darnold in a one QB. That was today. Today a two and a three, Shahid for yeah, Brown all, and Dalton. All these trades are from one d- yesterday or today. Yeah, I, I I'd like to give a you know a two and a and a next like I'd like like I said I'd like instead of giving you a two and a three uh, from the next draft class I'd like you know I'll give you a, I would try to give you a three next year and the two the following year first but you know if, or if it takes a two this year and a three next year I I don't mind doing that I'd I'd rather not do that if I had the worst team. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. if I have I a you. mid team and if, if if I'm giving you a mid two next year for Chase Brown and a mid three that, you know, approximately, mm-hmm. I'm happy to do it. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's go to one more and we'll get out of here. Uh, I want to end with something not related to making a move. DeAndre Swift here. Now, he had been on a list for me three weeks ago where I said, you know, might you might could possibly sell here and take what you can get. There was a patron who said, hey, I'm getting out on Swift. Uh, I'm taking Keaton Mitchell in a second and I'm getting out because I, you know, this doesn't look good. I'm going to take what I can get now before it gets any worse. And I was like, ah, maybe we should wait 
until we get a couple of good weeks. And then I got on here and I was like, hey, you know what? I, might not be a terrible thing because th it doesn't look right, right? They're not using them First right. couple of weeks, it looked horrible. They're, they're, trying, they're trying to run the ball, but they're doing it wrong with Swift. They're right. not throwing it to him. And then, you know, but and they were they were sticking with it, just smashing them up sure, the middle. But, like, well, this doesn't look right. But but let's let's be honest with what happened. The guy asked you the question and you said you don't mind it, but they were literally saying we need to give it to Roshan Johnson. And, and DeAndre Swift, it looked horrible with what was coming out of Chicago for the first couple of weeks. Right. Uh, but... But, now, he had, but he did now? stay healthy the whole time, which he, that was my point. Was he, like, I don't mind buying him a little bit or at least holding because yeah. of the fact that he's still healthy. And if they can turn this around, which it didn't look very promising, but now right. it's like, well, they're just they're, they're using yeah. they're using him on outside runs. They're using Roshan a little bit more up in the middle there to to pound it a little bit more. Not that Swift isn't getting any up the middle stuff, but. They're using Swift a lot more on the perimeter, getting him outside and attacking that way, which they were doing some of. It just the the, the game plan of how they're using and, and they're throwing the ball to Swift in in good designs and, and getting him in space and letting him do his thing, which is that's always where Swift is going to operate the best, right? Sure. Swift is not a between the tackle grinder. That's just not what he's going to do. Mm -hmm. He he's, can a little he bit. He can be a playmaker if you use um, him right. But we've seen that. We've seen it all kind of turn around. He's number three in target percentage at sixteen point five. If you go to uh, weeks four, five, and six, he's he's been absolutely excellent those those weeks. Uh, third in fantasy points per game, uh, twenty three point eight, and and so Mixon only played one game in that four, five, six range, uh, right? Which was the last one. So he's actually two because Mixon's second in fantasy oh, yeah, points yeah, per yeah, game. If yeah. you go four, five, six, he's number six in route percentage with fifty one point six. Ninth in snap percentage, sixty nine or sixty seven point nine percent. Everything trending in the right direction for Swift. He wasn't not playing a lot before either, but now in we in the last three weeks in four, five, six, you've seen him turn all that stuff, all, all these numbers that were shouting out at you from weeks four, five, six. It's turning into really, really good fantasy. For the, you know, basically second in fantasy points per game over the last three weeks. Yeah, uh, and and you know couldn't spent too long in my lineup. Right for the first three weeks, and yeah. then didn't missed get him back. Couple, missed, mm -hmm. missed him for a week, and mm -hmm. then had to get him back in some, and then finally got him back in all of them. True. In my eyes, you got a couple things going on here. First, we'll talk about how good the trajectory is for the Bears team and the rookie quarterback. So he has that on his side. But for the other side of the coin, weeks one and two, when he wasn't playing good, obviously they were the usage and the style of play they were, and the way they were running the offense. Casey just told you about all that. But they did play Tennessee and Houston. So both of those defenses against a rookie quarterback, especially to start the season, it would be interesting to see where how Tennessee good ends up. Well, I mean, good Tennessee's defenses. just uh, every game they're in. Good it, defense. It's, it's now, under 20, it seems like. Exactly. So that being said, weeks one and two against defenses, week three against Colts, there's no excuses. He's right. That, still, was, that was the one that was like, ah, yeah, this Colts defense. And then right. the Colts defense played really well that game. Exactly. So now. Against the run anyway. Well, even with, but, you know, in the midst of be collecting all those injuries that they're dealing with now. So it'd be a different story maybe if they, you know, played this week. But then you run into the Rams and the, and the Panthers back to back. You can't ask for better matchups to get right. Mm -hmm. And he got right. And then this week against the Jags, literally. The Jags have a much better defense than they do offense right now based on what's going on on the field, even though the whole team just looks sour, uh, you know, with the coach and all. Don't get Casey started on not needing mm -hmm. that coach to be hired anymore. Be, be, you know, what you know. does he even do? He right. literally said this week. I said, need, don't get Casey they started. Need, they need a culture change. Bo, are you just are you telling him to fire you? <laughs> like, I don't know. Right. How are you going to come out and say you need to change the culture? That's your culture. You're the culture changer. You are what the, the culture. What's happening here? How is this guy not on a fucking so, I would. I wouldn't even give him a plane. I'd send him back in a fucking boat, a, a wooden <laughs> ship with a sail. So he's had three really, really good defenses to a go. Hat. Like now your head's got sunburn. Jumping. As far as scoring points against, he's got he's three weeks in a row against bad defenses, and he crushed. Yeah. So and he's got a bye week this week, and then he comes out next week, and he's got after the bye week, y'all can't make this up. Washington and Zona. The next two, if you had to put five bad defenses in a row, it would be the five in a row he gets to play. Yeah. So there is this ridiculous defense is okay. They just lost their best defensive they, lineman. They, and the they, only reason they're okay is because Jaden Daniels got that entire team morale. Sure. And they got a decent they got a good defense. I mean, they got NFL professionals playing defense, right. but they don't have any true playmakers and they just lost the best one. So anyway, 
I, you know, there's a buy high window here for Swift. I mean, a sell high window here for Swift. Sell, I mean, an extremely high window to sell for Swift because even if you get into a conversation with somebody and it doesn't work out perfectly, you got the the Redskins and 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 Zona commanders right? I, I it's redskins and it's zona <laughs> the red like they've literally he's gonna correct them of all <laughs> yeah don't be correct they they they're suing the redskins to get their name back they want they want to be the redskins so anyway got some good defenses to come up so i don't expect uh, the sale window is open and i think it's going to be open for a little bit now he if he's helping you win a championship he's helping you win a championship uh, but I think it's a really good time to have him in a package that could help you do something bigger and better. Now, he's only 25. He may or may not. He's if he's he, again, I started this rant with the Bears are going places. Mm-hmm. And if if he's a part of the operation here, you know, they just signed him. So if he's a part of the operation long term, then there's nothing wrong with keeping him. Yeah. I don't want him. I don't want to sound like you need to sell him, but it has been up and down. And it's been hard to find a team in the right mindset that wanted to use him the correct way. And he's, we have a three game, la- most recent. Yeah, you got a six game sample, but the most three is the is the bet. You know, the little tweak they made is working out. I would look into having him as a in part of a package. Like I think Casey does a good job of this talking about. Maybe I'm not looking for a one for one. Like I don't want to go sell Swift for a second round pick right now. No, you know. So, but I don't think you're going to go out and get somebody's high end first round pick for him either. Um, but if he can be a package and he helps you get a, you know, a, a Rasheed Rice or a Nico Collins or those types of, play, you know, a level, if he, if he can help you take a, a level up in like prestigious type player that's hard to get, hard mm-hmm. to get. Uh, and I say those two because they're hurt. And if they weren't hurt, you wouldn't even yeah, be able to get which them. Which you might have a window because, again, Caleb ascending, Bears ascending, uh, Swift looking good through the last few games like you said you might be able to crazy variance here double up on 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 all that stuff moving forward and people being excited about wanting to put swift back on the team once a once a favorite of of a lot of people too right uh so somebody got garrett wilson for swift yeah throw that out that's fake just throw Uh, that out somebody got swift for Devontae adams uh yeah first for swift a second and a fourth for swift i'll take swift yeah, uh, I'll take Swift, Swift in a first for Nico. There we go. There we exactly. go. Get Nico, right? Exactly. I'll take that's Nico. fake. Throw it out. <laughs> that's probably probably is. You never know the 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 context on that first that's, round pick. That's a Russian, you know. Bot. Swift right. for two and a three. <laughs> I'll take Swift. Monty and Swift for a one and a two. I think two QB. You know, if you're if that's a late one and two. Mm-hmm. I can yeah, see doing that. Like worth looking that. at. Worth looking at. Good deal. Ray Davis, a two and a four. There's sure, one. give me Swift. Uh, there's a lot going on in there. Never mind. You got Swift and Zay Flowers and a two and another two for in a would different you, for Street. Would Street you Rice. trade your one to get Swift and a two back? No. No, nah, at this point, I would just want the one straight up for Swift, right? Oh, well, I want my first. Well, yeah, no, like, I want the first. If you're trading your first away, you wouldn't if trade I your first away to get Swift and a two back? Uh, I mean, yeah, I'm fine. I, if, I'm, if, I'm that, yeah, if I'm that side, I'd be okay with that if I'm, if I'm trying to go for it. A two all day. I'd probably hang on to the first over at Swift right now. Fair enough. Hawkinson or Swift, I could see Titan Premium. I could see getting Hawkins in there. Yeah, I've taken Hawkins. Hawkins is a nice buy right now. He has been for a while. So yeah. hit him, running get out. him before he's yeah. running out. Get him, hurry. Moves to make now. Hawkinson, an extra one there. Oh, look <laughs> at that. Five moves to make what on the title. Baby. And we're going to hit you with one more while we get out of here. Oh, another we're, one. We're way too long. We're way too long here. But you can't start another one. Can't stop that, once the, things. That, that one probably needs to. Your, I just your spiel needs to go to the next. I just want to next video. Sit here and just tell you that you. I know we do it all the time, but you don't have to make moves, right? So oh. it's, it's all right. You can stay active. You just gonna. You don't have to be plundering. And I'm not saying that. Yeah, you don't. You can stay active. But I, I, I have teams where I went from one from this past season where I was like. Hey, this team's okay, but you know I'm be, should be, I'm be fishing around. We might be in a rebuild, and I'm four and one, five and one in a bunch of those leagues, and I literally almost changed nothing on those teams. There weren't any huge moves to make. I didn't do anything crazy. I didn't make it. I didn't, I didn't go trade in, you know, just because I felt like I had to, and I had to blow this thing up. I didn't do anything crazy. I, I you know, I made I made some smart, small moves. The teams are almost exactly the same outside of some draft some players that i drafted but none of those guys are even really actually from this draft class contributing to my success in those teams so like just because the team isn't 
performing up to snuff right now doesn't mean that this team that you built needs to be completely torn down and redone because it's not working out. There's a myriad of reasons that it could not be working out for you. I'm telling you right now that me and Jason have a team where it was like, we're not we're not winning, man. We need, we, we need to sell Mixon. We need to do this. We need to do that. We didn't end up, we ended up, didn't end up doing a goddamn thing. Actually, we, we sold something away to get a first. We have two firsts next year. We have two firsts next year and Jonathan Brooks, who we haven't used at all. And we've, we're slain. We're slain. Playing. Almost a hundred points more than the next closest. It's just person. that that's what I'm saying. Like I get it. Like I'm I'm not telling you not to be active and I'm not telling you like, like we field so many panic questions about what to do and how to do. And it's like, dude, you don't you always need to be active and searching for the value and efficiencies, but you don't need to be making these big crazy moves and do all these crazy things because the player's not working out just this minute. If you did your research and believe in that player, like this is why we play dynasty. Dude, Chris Godwin's the wide receiver fucking one. We're about to talk to him on, on, on the next show. Like I got Godwin in some of those positions and he's crushing it for me. Kyron is is crushing it for me, right? Nico Collins is crushing it for me. Not right now, but obviously the fun for a lot of people is do is is the trading. I love trading. Big Co's whole thing is trading uh, you know but it does it just i know we come on here and we ha we have stuff to talk about and we try to do the moves to make but i try to not make it seem like you have to be making moves we make fun of it we make right we make light of it because Hurry. those are the titles that works for the masses that's why we use those titles because they work clearly you're giving it away um but you know secret ingredient <laughs> really at the end of the day you got it what we want to do is we want to come in here and we want to talk about football and how it's going and we want to look at some stats and we want to look at the play and we want to marry those two together and try to find out you know where where the deficiencies and efficiencies are and try to take advantage of those and i'm just telling you that through my i don't even know how many years i've been playing dynasty but you know i that i have four teams that i did almost nothing and they were didn't make the playoffs last year and they are the best team in the league and or top three and scoring at top two points so we've been doing this dynasty show for eight years this is our eighth season so yeah you know, we were so, playing before that. Just a couple to, years under our belt. Just yeah. wanted to hit that one up and, and tell you about it. So let's end there. Appreciate you guys coming in. Five-star reviews. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Hit us up on the Patreon for the $5 holiday. You get, some, you get an extra show every week over there. We got rankings being updated. We're doing a mock draft right now. We'll have ADP for your pleasure all off season. Uh, doing a ton of drafts. So make sure you check in over there. There's also a free Discord that you can check out if you haven't already. Until next time, peace.